Hello everyone and welcome to another really cool game from the 2019 uh, FIDE World Cup. It's King Ding vs Sergei Movsesian and uh, Movsesian was uh, uh, some 10 years ago, he was among the top 10 uh, rated players in the world with a rating of some 27.51. Now he's a bit lower rated uh, but nevertheless a very very strong opponent for, for Ding. And uh, two of the classical games between the two of them have been drawn, this is the first game of the Rapids. So without further ado, let's uh, check it out. Uh, Ding opens with c4. So the English is on the board with e5, uh, g3, knight to f6, uh, bishop to g2, and now d5. Uh, we have c captures, knight captures, knight to f3, and now the other knight is developed with knight to c6. Let me just lower this uh, a bit. Uh, we have castles by Ding, and now knight back to b6. Uh, b3, Ding prepares to Vienketo his uh, dark square bishop, and now bishop to d6. Uh, developing, preparing to castle, also putting more defense to the e5 pawn. Uh, bishop to b2, and now uh, Movsesian castles. We have d3 by Ding, uh, and queen to e7, with the idea of trading off the dark square bishops with uh, bishop to a3, once the knight is developed. Uh, we have knight b to d2, and here there is a, uh, there were a few games that have reached this position. Bishop to g4 is a known move, uh, f5 is a known move here, uh, one of the top engine's recommendations in fact is f5, but Movsesian prepared bishop to a3 for Ding. Not specifically for Ding, but probably as no one ever played before, probably he, he has this line prepared for someone, whoever, you know, uh, comes. Uh, but okay, uh, we have bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen to c1. Ding would very much enjoy trading queens here and uh, grab hold of the semi-open uh, c file for his rooks. Uh, Movsesian, of course, uh, declines this trade with queen to e7 and now queen to b2, freeing up the c file for the rooks. Uh, we have bishop to g4 by Movsesian and now rook a to c1. Uh, we have rook a to d8, uh, putting a rook on a semi-open d-file, and now rook f to e1, the knight can now move as the pawn is now nicely protected. Uh, rook f to e8, now uh, all of the pieces are developed, and now uh, we have a3, taking away the b4 square uh, from black's pieces, uh, also preparing b4. We have a5 by black, but b4 nonetheless. Uh, a captures on b4, a captures, and now... Uh, knight to d4, and here is uh, where the uh, part is really starting. Uh, with knight captures on d4, and here Movsesian gives up the pawn with e captures on d4, allowing Ding to capture the b7 pawn. Uh, somewhat, uh, well, l more logical was rook captures, as now if bishop captures on b7, you can also capture the pawn on b4, uh, as the queen is also protecting that. But Movsesian uh, will grab that pawn later. He prefers e captures on d4, now puts uh, a lot of pressure on the e2 pawn, as it's now a backwards pawn. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Ding accepts uh, the present with bishop captures on b7, and now knight to a4, attacking Ding's queen, uh, but queen to c2. And now Ding is attacking the knight on a4, and also, can you capture this pawn on b4? Well, if you capture with queen captures on b4, uh, you would lose the game, because now, of course, you'll see it, bishop to c6, uh, a double attack on the knight, uh, the queen and bishop attack it, and also your rook is under attack. So if you don't want to lose a piece, you have to move the knight somewhere. It's not really attacking anything there, now you just eliminate one of the rooks and you are up uh, the exchange, black doesn't really have anything to show for it, uh, so black would be lost here. Uh, after queen to c2, we have knight to c3 by Movsesian, and Ding now retreats with the bishop, bishop to f3, again not allowing the capture on b4 as black's bishop on g4 is under attack. With h4, defending it, uh, bishop captures, h captures, and now knight to b3. And here's where it uh, really uh, be becomes interesting. It's a rapid game, so you can't spend a lot of time. Uh, can you capture on b4? Uh, the Well, you can, but after you capture on b4, uh, you go knight captures on d4. You eliminate the defender of the knight, and after rook captures, you're going to capture on c3. And this is a, this was Black's best bet, uh, because Black uh, now has to play c5, but it's an extremely hard move to find in a uh, in a rapid game uh, where uh, you, you no longer have uh, this uh, weak uh, pawn on c7. Uh, but the point is that you have to see that after queen captures, you can just trade and then grab on d3, as you can't capture due to this uh, rook captures on e1 idea. And here you would have uh, four pawns against three pawns. Black would most likely be able to defend this. 
uh, so, but it's a it's a really tough idea to find in a rapid game. So here, uh, also possible, uh, not just queen captures on b4, is knight captures on e2. But if knight captures on e2 with check, then you get king to f1. And now, uh, what do you do here? Your knight is attacked three times. You capture on b4, and uh, you hope that, well, once the trades are made uh, on the knight, you're going to grab the b3 knight. The problem is you can't do this. Uh, because after rook captures and rook captures, white will just recapture with the king. That's the problem now. You're just down a piece. Uh, so, uh, here in Movsesian, uh, we could say, for, for the lack of a better move, uh, played c5. It's a, it's a strange idea, uh, but uh, he played it. I'm, I'm sure there, there is some reason behind it. Uh, I can't uh, really... Uh, explain it uh, as uh, the next move of Sessian plays uh, I, I don't see why it couldn't uh, have been played without the c5 move but I, I'm sure there is a reason uh, Ding accepted the pawn uh, he played b captures on c5 now creating a very strong pass c pawn and now of Sessian captured on e2 with check uh, Ding played king to f1 and now okay you cannot capture anything as the queen uh, would be captured but here queen to f6 and here we have this uh, uh, idea that Movsesian had. Uh, I don't know why it uh, couldn't work while the pawn was still on c7, why the pawn had to be sacrificed with, with c5, but uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Maybe I'm just tired. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, but okay, Movsesian's idea is now that uh, he wants to sacrifice the knight for queen to f3 followed by queen to h1 mate. Now, does this work? And can Ding capture the knight? Well, Ding captured it, so obviously Ding can capture the knight. Uh, with queen to f3, now threatening queen to h1 mate, and now rook captures on e8 with check. Of course, you have to play this. Rook captures on e8, and now how do you prevent queen to h1 mate? Uh, well, king to g1. This is what uh, Ding played, of course. He prevented mate, but now you get rook to e2. And now the threat is either you win the queen, or if the queen moves, uh, just queen captures on f2 with check, followed by queen captures on h2 with checkmate. So uh, why did the ding allow this? Uh, why, why did he get himself in such a position? Well, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea for uh, ding in this position while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are an excellent uh, giver of queens for winning positions. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, yes, you do have to give up your queen, but it's not really a problem. Here, Ding played queen captures on e2, uh, Movsesian recaptured, and Ding just played c6. And it was in this position that uh, Sergei Movsesian resigned the game, as uh, there is nothing uh, more to do here. Uh, for example, uh, if you play queen captures on d3, just c7, if you grab the knight, c8, queen, this comes with check, king moves, captures here, and the white is just up a whole rook, this is of course unplayable, and if you somehow try to prevent the pawn from queening, let's say you go queen e6, c7, queen c8, uh, the, uh, you, you don't really have any more moves, your queen is stuck on c8, and the white will just bring the knight, for example, you're gonna play g6, knight b5, you're gonna play something, you can't move the queen, otherwise c8 queen, now you're going to go to d6, uh, the queen is now under attack, you have to move the queen, and now you don't want to give up the knight for nothing, you're just going to capture here a pawn, uh, you're going to queen now, and now again you're up a whole rook, even with the trade, of course, completely unplayable. So of course, after c6, Sergei Movsesian saw this, and uh, in, in this position, he resigned the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, also uh, as a lot of you have been asking me to show the standings, it's hard to show the standings as there are so many players left in the tournament, uh, but I will just show you the pairings for the next round as, uh, well, it, it's going to be really exciting. So here it is, usually I check it out on Chess24 website, uh, I'm just going to enlarge this to 500% so you can see it better, uh, like this, okay. Uh, so for round three, uh, the pairings are uh, Ding will face uh, Alireza Firoja, so that, that's going to be an, uh, a really epic match. Uh, and even with his uh, 2700 rating, it, it pales in comparison to Ding's 2811. I, I think on live ratings, uh, Ding has now overtaken Fabiano Caruana as the second highest rated player in the world, but we still have to wait for next month and see if that will still hold. Uh, so, uh, Alexenko will face uh, Hare Krishna, uh, we have uh, Linear Dominguez will face Wang Hao, uh, then uh, Xiang Yushu will face Alexander Grishuk, uh, also should be very interesting, uh, Vidit uh, will face Wesley So, uh, we have uh, Nikita Vitugo will face Sergei Karyakin, uh, 
Yan Nepomnišovu face uh, Evgeny Tomaševski. Jan definitely the favorite in this match, but then again, Nepo is the favorite in every match. Uh, we have uh, uh, Wei Yi versus Yu Yang Yi, also uh, another Chinese clash. Uh, we have uh, Jeffrey Xiong versus Anish Giri. Giri really had an insane game uh, today against uh, Evgeny Nair. Uh, he, he had to play nine games against him to finally beat him in the ninth game uh, to advance uh, uh, into round three. Then Jan Krzysztof Duda will face uh, Dmitry Andrekin. Uh, and Duda also won all of his games in, in the classic section, so I, I think he's having a very nice run. Uh, then uh, Elter Safarli has eliminated Nikhil Sarin, Sarin sorry, <laughs> from the uh, from the FIDE World Cup. Uh, really, just two two very hard blunders for uh, Sarin, and it, it was all over. So too bad for him. Uh, but now he faces uh, uh, Shahrir Mamedyarov. Will be a, a very tough match for for Safarli. Uh, then we have uh, Daniil Yufa versus Timur Rajabov. Uh, we have uh, Maxim Vashir Lagrav versus Dmitry Akovenko. Uh, Maxim won all of his games so far. So out of the four games that he played, he uh, scored uh, all four wins. So he's on 100%. Uh, and Peter Svidler, who eliminated Andrei Esipenko, will face uh, Liviu Dieter Nisipeanu, uh, who eliminated Hikaru Nakamura. Should be also a very, very exciting matchup. Uh, Maxim Matlakov will face Levon Aronian. And here we have Lequang Liam will face Vladislav Artemiev, also known as Chuck Norris. Uh, we, uh, I'm very interested to, to, to see how, how far uh, Artemiev can, can take this. So yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kenny Archibald, uh, Christian Pope, Corentin Solier, uh, Mark Jensen and Twitch Streamer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, checking up more of the games from the FIDE World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions as usual, uh, and so on. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.